Voice of the Sea, learning from experts across the ocean. Welcome to Voice of the Sea. In this episode, we're experiencing life in American Samoa. We take a look at how American Samoa is similar to other places in the Pacific and how it is unique. We see Samoan culture through the eyes of an ethnographer, as well as Samoan youth, talking chiefs, and Sea Grant fisheries experts. In this episode of Voice of the Sea, we're on the island of Tutuila in American Samoa. Up first, we talk with Micah Vander Ryan, ethnographic and media services specialist at the Samoan Studies Institute. Micah talks about the origin of the word Samoa, and then we see scenes from his documentary. According to our understandings in archaeology, archaeological evidence is that the Samoan Islands have been inhabited for more than 3,000 years, and the earliest peoples had pottery, and the original pottery was, had a, dint, a special design on it, they call it uh -huh. lapita, um, and then after some, uh, I think about a thousand years, they continue to make pottery, but they stopped making the designs. Oh. And then at some point, they stopped making pottery. And it's a lot of speculation as to why they stopped, if another group of people came that had a cultural influence that got them to stop or, or what. It was, it's never been fully explained. Do they but, know at all what they used instead of the pottery? Well, I think they use wooden vessels a lot. And I know that, um, you know, you didn't have steel pots for cooking right. before, but someone's have a wooden bowl and they heat it hot rocks and oh. they could they would add the hot rocks into the food that they wanted to cook but most food is cooked you know wrapped in leaves and put in the stone oven and covered with leaves steam cooked in the umu but that's another technique in wooden utensils but I, I'm not we don't really know why you know what that much about that ancient history but then the outward migration from Samoa was I think the people were living here for over over a thousand years before the migrations to other islands began. Um, I mean, they were in Tonga and also Samoa and then during that period. And then Polynesians after that started spreading out mainly from Samoa. The word Samoa itself has many meanings. One is the word, it could mean sacred center because Moa means center, oh. Sa means sacred. Um, it also, Sa can also, before a word that's a name of a family, uh -huh. can also mean the descendants of. And Moa is a very important family from the Nua Islands that um, it was believed that maybe Samoa, in, according to Samoan, some Samoan history, that it sort of was the beginning point for the Samoan Islands as far as the cultural development. So the descendants of the Moa clan. Uh -huh. And um, so that's another meaning as well, sacred center, because it is kind of a, a central point from which Polynesians, a central homeland from which Polynesians migrated outwards in different directions. And you have Tonga in the south, and Tonga also mm -hmm. means south, and you have Tokelau in the north from here, which also means um, north, oh, the I word Tokelau in Samoan. But, um, and the word Moana, it, you know, there's multiple names for the word ocean. Like Moana means also blue, but it means the deep blue ocean. And you have the word Sam, Samoa and Samoana. Na has a meaning as pertaining to Moa. So Moana is like pertaining to Moa, which I already described could be like that important clan, uh -huh. family clan from Manua Islands of Samoa. So there are some beliefs, you know, there was an original, um, <coughs> Tui Manua, the king of Manua, had a kind of a empire where people were paying tribute to him and coming back and forth to Samoa. So the ocean, that was the, his Moana. That could be, uh, you know, considered as a possible <laughs> interpretation. There's multiple interpretations. Then there's that other word for um, the sea, Sami? Yes, I was gonna, and I was gonna mention other words for the sea. So Sami and also Vasa and um, Ngataifale. There's three other interesting Samoan words used to refer to the ocean. So um, I wanted to mention Vasa first. Um, I had mentioned Ba as the relationship in space between mm -hmm. um, people and spatial relationships and social relationships. And so Vasa could also be, that has the word Ba and Sa, ah. like the sacred space between. And the word Vasa for ocean is used in Samoa to refer to the 
distance on the ocean between points, like, oh. and between islands and places. That's, it's referring to the distance on the ocean between places. The total land area of Manua equals 51 square kilometers, the majority of which lies on steep slopes behind the coastal villages. The 2010 American Samoa Census indicates that less than 1,200 people were living among the five counties and eight villages that constitute the Manua District. American Samoa Department of Education supports three elementary schools and one high school in Manua to serve Manua's children. Those wishing to pursue higher education or employment opportunities not available in Manua must leave for Tutuila and beyond. This pattern has led to a dramatic decline in the local population. Air and ship transport between Tutuila and Manua are limited. Ferry service on the MV Sili is at best once per week. Air transport in small planes is also not reliable. Importing and exporting supplies is a challenge. This means that the people who remain in quieter and more tranquil Manua must enjoy a way of life more reliant on traditional food sources from the sea and land. Most people in Manua participate in fishing, and fish is an important component of the Manua diet. From a young age, most children in Manua learn how to fish. <laughs> I headed over to Amoli village to see firsthand how modern life and traditional customs intersect. The village had organized a meeting about the effects of climate change. At the meeting, children and adults listened to NOAA scientists, fisheries biologists, the Samoan Department of Marine and Wildlife Resources, and coral reef advisors to the Department of Commerce. I sat down with the village mayor and talking chief, Senele Siloy, to hear how life in American Samoa is being affected by our changing climate. How do people in your village feel about um, climate change issues? How is it affecting Amoli? Well, one thing for sure is it's affecting my village. Because uh, if I look around, long time ago, this village used to be beautiful, a lot of sand. And if you go down to down the ocean, it's nothing but rocks on the other. It used to be a lot of sand, now it's rocks. Uh -huh. So that tells you this is changing. And plus the stream, when it rains a lot, this one here, the stream around in the back of us, it, it's just, it's a mess. So the, my village understand, and uh, that's why we're having this meeting. We understand the impact of the climate change in not only my village, but any village. So whatever, because whatever happened to my village is going to happen to another village. I'm the one who represents the village in the in the government. If they have the have if the government wants something from the village, they always approach me first, uh -huh. come to me first, then I go to the village. University of Hawaii Sea Grant College Program, helping coastal communities of Hawaii and the Pacific through research, education, and outreach. Serving the community from elementary to graduate students. Hawaii Sea Grant. Welcome back to Voice of the Sea. In this episode, we're talking about life in American Samoa. Ephraim Temple, Aquaculture Extension Agent and Science Professor at American Samoa Community College, talks to us about the differences in culture between Hawaii and American Samoa, as well as some of the challenges he has faced here. Ephraim has been stationed in American Samoa as a University of Hawaii Sea Grant College Program Extension Agent for the past five years. He went to high school and college in Hawaii, but has also lived in Tonga and the U.S. mainland. For, uh, for the, the 
culture here is family. Um, the, the big part of the culture is, is taking care of each other. And so you have chiefs and, and this different structure of leadership to help the families stay together. That's, that's my perspective as an outsider. And, uh, and so the students that come to the college are part of that. They're bound to that. Sure. And there isn't much opportunity for them to leave because they're so vital to the family and they're needed at home. And so, so they live at home, they come to school, they go back home and they, they have chores to do. And, and they're still a big part of that, even though they're adults now. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so for most, most of the college students, they don't have really the option to leave. Um, and some of our students will go uh, and they'll get a bachelor's degree after, after going to ASCC. And then they'll have to come back because then it's their siblings' turn sure. to go and get their bachelor's degree. You know, and they would love to go get a master's and continue their education, but the way that family is, it's like, okay, now you come home and and uh, and you wait your turn for the next step, um, and that's common too. So, uh, so that was kind of surprising to me too um, about about living here in such a strong sense of culture. Um, Hawaii has a strong sense of culture, but uh, you know, half of the students I graduated with at Kahuku High School went to the mainland after, and that's totally fine. Um, they're coming home all the time. They're visiting uh -huh. their family all the time, but they live in California and Arizona sure. and Nevada and you know wherever else. And so, um, but here, uh, a lot of the students that I've come to know, at least, they're they're going to be here, and if they do get a degree off island, they're going to come back. So that makes it even more important, the things like you're saying, of teaching them to be the ones that are monitoring their own resources and having a voice in the conservation efforts. That's right. That's right. Yeah, they're going to have to. And, uh, and it's better if it is them. Because uh -huh. um, we do see such a hiccup between contract hires. Um, projects get started. Projects get created. They run for a few months. And then that person who's driving the project leaves. And then a new hire doesn't come for six months. Nice. And in that time, the project died. And then the new hire is not interested in the same projects, creates their own new projects, and barely gets them started, and then their contract ends. And we see this over and over. I've, I've lived here for five and a half years, and that's uh, enough time to see this cycle like three times through, um, through you know, different contract hires. And, and that does not help American Samoa as much as it could. But the villages themselves have such a strong presence that if um, the people who are doing those positions were coming from the villages, it seems there'd be a lot more continuity. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm convinced that there would be. You know, and there's another difference. Uh, I, I, from, from my experience on Oahu and in Hilo, there's, you know, there's canoe clubs and, and a lot of people in the water, a lot of surfing, um, a lot of ocean sports uh, uh -huh. in Hawaii. And here, uh, people are in the water, not as many as you think. And that was, a, that was kind of a surprise to me when I first came. I, I was expecting a lot of fishermen, uh, a lot of people in little canoes uh, uh -huh. fishing. Um, I thought there was going to be a real tight connection to the ocean. And, um, and I thought that I would see all this water sport going on. Sure. And, and there's not much. Uh, and people don't swim here. There's a, a very small percentage of the population here that feels comfortable in the water. And, and that was a shock to me, I, a, a surprise that there was kind of this disconnect between uh -huh. people and the ocean. And when I thought that there was going to be everybody in the water swimming and, and really active uh, water people. At the National Marine Sanctuary of American Samoa, I spoke with High Talking Chief Apulu Veronica Morrison. Apulu connects Western management with traditional practices, serving as an important community liaison and Samoan Matai. Everything we do here, most of the things are, are all always connected to the ocean. And it's important too that we let our people know that the ocean is very much part of our lives and that we need to be good stewards and uh, take care of it. So you're the education coordinator here at the, the sanctuary. Liaison. And how did you come to have that job? I'm a, by trade, I'm an educator. I used to be principal at a high school. Uh -huh. And um, 
And then with the community side of it, I'm a chief from my village. That's my uh, Apulu. I'm a high-talking chief. So I'm able to communicate with uh, other chiefs. Because when we do, how we do things here in the Samoan culture is we go through the Saufa Inga Lenu'u or village council. And other chiefs have respect for other chiefs. So when you want something done out in the village level, in the community, you always go through the office of Samoan Affairs. And other chiefs, they recognize you as a chief and you're able to communicate um, freely and with no um, obstacles at all. Mm -hmm. So, and the topic is received well. And then to collaborate and to work on a solution comes very easy. And you said one of your goals is to um, talk to the people and bring that connection from the ocean to the people. And uh, I imagine I, with modern influences and things like that, sometimes we're losing that connection. Every family, every village here, in front of their homes is the ocean. And they claim ownership of that part of the ocean as their own, and they take care of it. And when things are impacting the ocean, like marine debris, like the crown of thorns when there's an outbreak of it, or there's some scene, we inform the community on how to work with us, to all go out there and try and, and eradicate the problem, whether it's marine debris removal or the plastic bottles on the ocean just floating, anything. And the community is always willing to oblige. They, because the ocean is theirs, they have this sense of ownership. Although, as Ephraim said, the people in American Samoa are not connected to the ocean in the way that they once were. They are the historical Polynesian travelers. It is people like Apulu that are helping the Samoan people reconnect with the ocean on a personal level, one that is sometimes lost in busy, westernized living. Similarly, Ephraim's oceanography courses at the community college are helping Samoans not only learn about the marine environment through active exploration, but also providing them with the swimming and snorkeling skills they need to reconnect and rediscover the immense beauty in the reefs and lagoons that make up their front yards. Turn your love of the ocean into a lifelong career. Join NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, as we unlock the secrets in the deep oceans, track rapidly moving storms, model climate trends, protect and preserve our marine resources, and so much more. It's all in a day's work at NOAA. Find a career that makes a world a difference, enriching life through science, service, and stewardship. NOAA. Welcome back to Voice of the Sea. Daylin Jennings, education assistant at the sanctuary, talks about the success of the new community recycling program. So I've heard that you have a new recycling program here in American Samoa. Yes, um, they recently just started uh, recycling here in Samoa uh, at ASPA. And it's really good because a lot of people really, you know, not only it's changing us, but it's changing the environment. You know, you're starting to see cleaner streets. People, uh, this is the first time I see people digging other people's <laughs> trash just for plastics and all this stuff. But you know what? They get money for it. So it's an incentive. You know, you do this, you get something in return. But it's helped a lot. So you've seen a difference not only in people's behavior, but also the environment, just looking around. Oh, you yeah. Can tell. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Now, you know, you don't see a lot of trash on the floor. You know, a lot of people are starting to hold their trash when they're walking, saying, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna put this in a plastic bag, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do something with, you know. So they're really changing, and it's good. And it's, recycling it was never a bad thing, you know. So, uh, I, I, can, I, I can't put enough emphasis about how important recycling is in here in Samoa. We're such a small island, and for us to have, you know, we're one of the top places to be toured, you know, so 
do it for you, do it for your home, and do it for the pride of Samoa. Next up, we spoke with Tim Clark, marine ecologist at the National Park of American Samoa. Tim was born and raised in Hawaii and has studied at Texas A&M and the University of Hawaii. For the past five years, Tim has been studying how the marine environment in American Samoa is changing in response to climate change and other environmental pressures. His work in American Samoa has also given him perspective on the differences in land ownership between Hawaii and American Samoa, and the effect of this on society. So um, having lived in Hawaii then for a, a substantial amount of time and now being here in American Samoa, what are some of the cultural differences that you notice? There's been a number of them. Uh, Hawaii is obviously a lot more developed. You know, it's, you have all your eye gadgets and <laughs> easy internet access and everyone has their little phones with the, the buttons and stuff. Um, we still have flip phones here. Uh, internet is okay, but not all that great. Uh, you don't have Wi-Fi or anything like that. Um, but it's, you know, it's nice that way. Um, so it's not as technical, technologically advanced. Uh, the people are a bit different. You know, here it's a lot more traditional. You know, they still live in villages, and they still have the village matai system, which is a system of chiefs. And so you know, things in the village, if there's problems in the village, it goes to the village council and the village council discusses it um, and then doles out punishments uh, for whatever the different crimes are. There are local police that take care of more serious crimes, but, you know, things that are deal with the village are taken care of in the village. Another nice thing here is the, the Samoan people still own their own land. Uh -huh. So only Samoans can own land in American Samoa. And in a village, usually you have family land. So that land gets passed on from generation to generation. So if you have land, your kids then build on that land, their kids build on that land. So it's sort of kept through the family over generations, um, but it's doled out also by the village. So there's some, lenient, some flexibility in there. So I think that's really nice just because, you know, by owning their own land, uh, they can take ownership of that, sure. they can work the land, they have a, a home. Whereas in Hawaii, I think it's been unfortunate that a lot of the land has been lost to the local Hawaiians. And that's created a lot of problems in Hawaii. And it's nice to see that both the, the village system and the matai, the chief system, is still in place here. And also that they still own their own land and are always going to have a home in American Samoa. Thanks for watching Voice of the Sea. The Curriculum Research and Development Group in the College of Education at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. CRDG's training routes go back over 40 years. Through professional development programs, curriculum workshops, research on teaching methodology, individualized school and district training, and so much more. The Curriculum Research and Development Group, improving schools, improving education. CRDG. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is the dynamic curriculum developed by the University of Hawaii's Curriculum Research and Development Group. The award-winning Fluid Earth and Living Ocean textbooks are now interactive and online. New activities, updated content, and a teacher community. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is now freely available. Find out more at exploringourfluidearth.org.